we are back again with another installment of Tony Restores. So, onto our piece. Look at that thing. How cool. We gave you a preview of this one in a prior episode, but oh, Nelly, is this one going to come out great. I love the doors on it. The hardware is really, really cool. Some old school hardware. So, solid old piece. Um, can't wait to get started on this one. It's going to be very, very cool. Does need a lot of work though. Uh, we got a huge split here in the wood, which is going to require a lot more tender loving care. So I'll walk you guys through uh, this type of repair uh, step by step. Um, we're going to end up doing this. I, I want to stain this one, so we're going to bring it all the way down. It's going to be the first one I show you guys of uh, of keeping the grain and uh, doing a stain with a polyurethane coat on top for protection. But to fix this big old crack here, uh, first of all we have to uh, glue it together and then we use this uh, wood filler here to fill in these lines to bring it back, uh, get rid of them wrinkles, as they would say. Uh, we'll do that and then we'll uh, clamp them together, let that glue dry, clamp them together so it's nice and firm and then we're gonna make those lines disappear. So, very cool stuff. The only thing is too here is we got some clean, looks like there was a big spill here. So the interior is going to need quite the cleaning as well. Um, but yeah, beautiful, beautiful looking piece. Great for the uh, entry hallway to a home or uh, even a, you know, a condo or apartment. Very, very cool piece. Uh, when I'm done with it, it's going to look sweet, as you guys know. So. Awesome, we'll get started as usual with, uh, we're gonna de-hardware it, take the doors off, uh, clean it up and sand it, so. Here we go. All right, guys, we got the hardware off there. So we're gonna really give it a good scrub down, clean that up. So um, before we do that though, let's get a little overview of the tools here. We're gonna be doing the assorted uh, sandpaper. So we're gonna go all the way from the 80 to the 120 to the 220 to give it a really nice, fine, good sanding. Uh, we got the clamps to lock in um, the glue, we're gonna fill all the cracks. Uh, with our wood filler here, great stuff. Got some uh, apple cider vinegar in there to clean it up afterwards. And then our hardware, we're gonna go with the satin nickel again. I just love this color, satin nickel rocks. So uh, one key thing I wanna tell you guys what this is, um, one thing I've learned over time doing it is always spray the backs of your hardware first. So that way when you flip it around uh, and spray it a second time on the face, uh, there's no blotching or anything. So, one more tip that I've learned over time. Give it a good little spray on the back. So once that dries now, we'll flip it over in about 12 hours or so. And uh, that way we can keep it as clean looking as possible and do the other side. So, good stuff guys. We're gonna get to cleaning and get to sanding. Years old, and uh, looks like this one had a can explode and leak everywhere, and now it's just a, a black, goopy mess. So I may need to get some additional product to to clean that off. But then again, at this point, I think I'm just gonna get the surface of it off since it's the on the inside anyway. Thank goodness. And um, I think I'm just gonna line the entire inside instead of uh, restaining it.
So yeah, these palm sanders, they work great. Love these things. Um, especially for pieces like this where you gotta get into intricate little nooks and crannies. So yeah, there goes the 80 grit. Now we'll work our way up. We'll do another round of 120. Another round of 220. Looking good, guys. All right, y'all. So we uh, we went ahead and sanded and we uh, cleaned it up. Got just a bucket of hot water to get most of the, uh, the goopy sawdust off. So we did the uh, 80 grit and the 120 grit. Before I do the 220 grit uh, sanding, I'm gonna repair this part. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue it together. We're gonna grab these clamps um, and glue it up and then any kind of holes that we see here or any lines, we're gonna go ahead and fill those up with the, with the wood filler. And then uh, after about 24 hours, uh, after the glue hardens and when the um, wood filler dries, we will go ahead and sand again with our 220 paper, uh, our 220 sand. So we're gonna get started on doing that. And then uh, on the inside, like I said, we're not gonna go ahead and uh, we're not gonna redo that. That's gonna be, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, liner paper on there. So, looking good guys, progress. You're doing this just kind of keep get it keep it as smooth as possible just fill in the cracks that's all so and there's also little depressions in the wood which is natural and you kind of just fill in those holes a little bit so we can keep a nice flush top surface so we're gonna go ahead and let that glue dry We've got it clamped up and just keep filling uh keep filling holes and cracks here I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let that dry up and then re-sand it back down. Prep it for its first coat of stain. Alrighty, liner is installed. Looking good. Making progress here. So it's gonna dry overnight for 24 hours and then we're gonna go ahead and sand it down with the 220, get it nice and fine. One more time everywhere. And uh, then we will give it the stain.
Alright guys, I'll give you a close up here doing this. So when you, you just kind of want to, when it comes to stain, real lightly, go right with the grain. Let that wood just soak up all the stain as you go. As you can kind of see here now too, the lines that we filled are, are gone. We do have a a little bit of one there, but that's okay. Mainly, where our break was, we are fully reconnected. So, go with the grain as the key. Can we keep as straight in line as possible. And when it comes to, you know, doing doors and stuff like that and getting the cranny, same thing. But you, uh, you always want to go with the grain. So, you know, when you're going long ways here, the grain's going this way, but on these side pieces, the grain goes this way. So always with the grain, always be observant of where the grain is going, especially with stain, because unlike paint, you're gonna see it. So nice and smooth, nice and easy. Supply the even steven coat of the stain. Even stevens. And then depending on how well the wood takes it, we're just gonna um, you know, apply a second and third coat as needed here. So, that's that. So if you guys notice too, I put the fresh stain on the top and it looks like you can barely see the grain because it's laid on uh, fresh. Whereas this has been drying for quite a while on the side and you can see how the wood just soaked up that first coat. Um, that's how you're going to kind of tell how many coats you need. But yeah, over time, um, the grain will reappear as the stain dries and the wood soaks the stain up. And depending on the type of wood it is and how well it was sanded, uh, will determine how much to apply. So yeah, just be conscientious of that. If you can't see the grain when you're applying it, um, just you know, take good note of it. Obviously the grain's going this way. On this side of the piece, we're gonna go straight down. All right, we're gonna go ahead and apply that second coat now to our top and uh, see how it comes out. It soaked up the first one really, really well. So we'll do one more here. And uh, like I said, just be sure to uh, go as evenly as possible. Apply a flat layer and uh, let that wood soak it up. Resto squad. We're gonna go ahead and do the final steps here. We're gonna reattach the uh, the hardware, put the doors back on, and then um, some people like to leave these on the bottoms of the furniture. Um, I don't. I like to pull them out and put the felt pads right on there. Um, nowadays, so many people have hardwood floors and stuff like that, that even if you put the felt pad right over these, um, they still end up scratching your, your wood floor, your laminate, or your tile. So I just pull them all the way out and then put a big felt pad on the bottom. So we're going to do that. We're going to reattach that hardware and uh, keep it moving.
the shores of glass this too shall pass for reality fights to says not so fast first you must climb a calvary of shattered hopes and then a mountain of prayers and hurt till you reach the peak where you can see the dark abyss below then you let me know if you have what it takes for a leap of faith you had to say hell no heaven just for not ten please bless the forehead cold in the bed or alone on the road with nobody to hold when the pouring rain is too much to bear it's a reason to live for a season he's cared till death to spark and it did come suddenly like clouds and it hit much so your truth is real then imagine it die cast in the bed on the lives we nursed in the days we cherished as yeah so when you uh Put your little felt tips on the bottom. Make sure you bring them all the way to the edge. So I had to put three on here since there wasn't ones that are large enough to fill up the whole circumference. So I just put three on each leg so that way it doesn't scratch up a floor. Uh, really can't stress how key this is too. You'd be amazed at how easily you can uh, you can destroy flooring with uh, some of these some of these pieces. Like those old screws are really rusted out and they could do some damage, so. Okay, we're coming together, hardware looks cool. Look at that, guys. Very, very nice. All right, y'all, we are on the final step here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and apply our polyurethane. Oil-based, right to the top of this to seal it up, that way the surface doesn't get scratched by anything uh, that the, its new owner will put stuff on. So Minwax is a decent brand, this isn't my favorite, but uh, I have some of it, so we're gonna use it. Um, yeah, you wanna get, make sure you get the clear satin. Uh, there's tons of different variations of this, so I typically go with the clear satin uh, when I'm doing these. So we're just gonna give a nice solid coat of this right on the surface. Uh, to protect it and that will be our final thing we do so let's get to it okie dokie let's go ahead and apply it with this stuff guys you don't have to uh, put it on very thick it's real light some people like to sand it down after they've applied it but uh, if you apply it right the first time Nice thin layer, you shouldn't have to sand it again. And also like I was saying, I'm using Minwax right now. Not my favorite brand. Usually I like to stick with the Varathane stuff, which, which is we've been using. Um, but this works too. This is just fine. Just make sure your lines are straight. Like I said, you don't really need a lot. Just enough to cover the surface and give it a nice protective top coat. I can imagine maybe this is right at someone's entryway to their home. They'll put their keys on here and uh, all kinds of stuff like that. Pieces like this usually are in high traffic areas where they're gonna see a lot of action. Um, so, you know, some people put runways on here too to prevent that kind of scratching. But, uh, nice thin layer of this polyurethane to coat the top. And make sure it doesn't get stretched, scratched up again. And the biggest no-no I can say about this phase, guys, is um, make sure that if you used an oil-based stain, that you use an oil-based poly. Uh, because if you try to put, if you try to mix any either of those two around, where it's water and oil, obviously you're gonna have some major issues. So always be double checking before you buy um, that you're putting oil on oil or water on water. It's gonna be the biggest thing, otherwise your piece will be ruined. You'll have to sand it all the way back down and do it again. So, and that's always a pain because it can ruin also the wood underneath and it's just never, never a good idea. So might as well get it right the first time.
Here we go, guys, the finished product. It's all done, all dry. Our poly has completely sealed the top. So this is the finished product. Came out really nice. I love, uh, I love when a piece comes out nice. It's not perfect, um, but it's pretty cool. There's our compartment for all the uh, future belongings of its new owners. So, looking very, very nice. I uh, give you guys a close up here. There's the top. So as you can see, that repair is, that complete break is now fixed, which is really cool. Uh, almost as if it wasn't there. Same thing with our big old crack that we had here on the bottom. Uh, barely noticeable, blends in with the rest of the grain. It still shows through a little bit here, if you guys can see that. It's not perfect, um, but again, so much better than, than what it was. It was really busted up, so it's, it came out great. I, I'm very, very happy with how it looks. The stain uh, really applied well, and it's a beautiful little piece. It'll go great in someone's hallway. I like the way that the uh, satin nickel goes with the carbon gray. It's just a really cool contrast. So, yeah, that's that's it. We'll go inside here again. Give you guys a close-up look of the uh, interior space. Pretty sweet. I love how this locks too. It's just such such cool hardware. Every once in a while, I find hardware that I really really like, and I I, I like this locking mechanism. It's quite cool. So, yeah, there she blows. Alrighty, thanks again for watching, y'all. Really really appreciate it. Please again, feel free to uh, leave a comment, give me any tips, any pointers. Uh, we're definitely new to this whole recording and editing thing, so. Uh, much appreciated for any uh, improvements, suggestions you guys can make. Um, the link will be in the description for all the materials used, um, you know, how many hours I put in, that kind of thing, uh, all the total costs. You can, you can do this kind of stuff for really cheap, guys, and uh, bring something back, uh, give it new life that, uh, that would otherwise end up in a landfill. So I can't recommend it uh, uh, enough for anybody who's looking to pick up a new hobby that's uh, not only fun, but uh, doing something good. So. Yeah, uh, check out uh, the Patreon. Uh, I have a new Patreon set up where I'm gonna be doing in-depth breakdowns of each video, going into a little more detail uh, about every little thing, about my purpose, uh, the products, um, the paints, all that kind of stuff. I do a deep dive and give you guys a little bit more of an insight on uh, what my thought process was as I went through. So, thanks again for watching, y'all.